A question that often comes up with Chinese launches is, why do some Chinese rockets seem to decompose at liftoff, with a lot of white debris falling off the rocket during the first 30 seconds? This happens mostly with Chinese older generation rockets, the Long March 2, 3, and 4 and their variants, so let's explain what these white pieces are and why this happens. Welcome to the Dongfang Hour, a YouTube channel where we talk about Chinese space. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dongfang Hour. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Some people have suggested that these white pieces could be chunks of ice, as you could see on some other rockets, such as the Saturn V. The Saturn V used cryogenic propellants like liquid hydrogen and oxygen, which can have temperatures of below minus 200 degrees Celsius, and this triggers the formation of a massive amount of ice on the rocket that falls and breaks off during launch. But this is not the case of Chinese legacy Long March rockets because they don't use cryogenic fuels. The answer to the mystery of falling white debris is actually thermal insulation tiles. The reason the Chinese put these on their rockets is to enable the rocket interior to stay within a certain temperature range. Let's try and understand why. The Chinese rockets concerned are the Long March 2 to 4 and their variants, and these rockets use hypergolic fuels, more specifically unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, also known as UDMH, and nitrogen tetroxide. And these are components that are in a liquid state at room temperature. For UDMH, the melting point is minus 58 degrees Celsius and the boiling point is plus 63 degrees, while for nitrogen tetroxide, the melting point is at minus 9.3 degrees and the boiling point at 21.2 degrees Celsius. So in theory, there isn't a need for insulation to keep these two components in the liquid state. But the thing is, these rockets launch from the launch sites of Zhou Chuan, Taiyuan, and Qichang, and notably the first two launch sites, Zhou Chuan and Taiyuan, are situated deep inland with semi-arid and desert climates, where there are massive temperature differences between the different seasons and also between night and day. And so just to give an example, it can go well below minus 15 degrees Celsius in the winter and beyond plus 30 degrees in the summer. And as we can see, this gets close and even past the melting and boiling points of nitrogen tetroxide. So I think that's one of the main reasons why the Chinese use these thermal tiles. It's to keep the propellant tanks warm or cool when external temperatures are extreme. That being said, other components can also be affected by temperature, such as seals, cables, or servo mechanisms, which can cause catastrophic failures. And just to give an example, the Space Shuttle Challenger tragedy in 1986 was caused by the failure of two O-ring seals, which had their elastic properties affected by the record low temperatures at the time of the launch. Now going back to the Long March rockets, we know that the Long March 2F's theoretical operating conditions are no less than minus 20 degrees Celsius according to a government article from 2005. And so we can expect the other Long March 2 to 4 rockets, which are based on the same core technologies, to have similar thermal limits. And considering the record low temperatures that you have in Zhou and Taiyuan, again, it's not a surprise if this kind of thermal insulation is used on the rocket exterior. Now, I'd like to add that the use of these tiles is not necessarily a systematic occurrence. For example, it is much more rare to see these insulation tiles during launches in the seasons of spring and summer, where the temperature differences tend to be a little bit more workable and more mild. And in these instances, you can generally see the rockets deprived of this insulation foam, revealing details such as the interstage vent holes, which are otherwise covered up. And similarly, at the launch site of Xichang, which is situated significantly more to the south, at a latitude of 20 degrees north, it is a much more rare occurrence to see insulation foam used on the rockets there. And finally, I'd like to add that these insulation tiles are sometimes used on the rocket fairings themselves to increase the thermal stability of the environment where you generally store the satellites. The reason for this is that some satellite subsystems and instruments can sometimes be very sensitive to temperature and humidity, and this is why launch pads generally have air conditioning units to maintain a stable environment inside the fairings. But air conditioning ducts are disconnected shortly before launch, and so in the case where you would have a launch abort, and that does happen every once in a while, well, you would need to maintain some level of thermal stability with a passive system such as thermal insulation foam until the air conditioning ducts can be reconnected. 
And so in a nutshell, sometimes you have Chinese rockets with no insulation foam, and sometimes you have Chinese rockets that are literally covered with insulation foam. And I'd also add that it's not necessarily easy to see the difference before liftoff, because the Chinese paint over the insulation foam with the same designs and patterns that you would find beneath the foam. And so you usually realize that the insulation tiles are there after the liftoff when these tiles start falling off. There's of course an exception for the interstage vent holes as I mentioned earlier, because while those are indeed covered up by insulation foam, the Chinese don't paint artificial vent holes over them, so those are pretty easy to spot. And so that's it for this episode. As always, a very special shout out and thanks to our most recent patrons, Spef Huatu and SpaceXSG, who went to buymeacoffee.com slash Hour to support the channel and make sure that we stay caffeinated. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.